Hello and welcome to another session of Beyond the Plate in State Institute of Hotel Management, Dimapur. Today I am here with my students and we are going to prepare minestrone today. So our students are going to tell you what minestrone is. They are going to give the demonstration how to make minestrone. This is a classical Italian soup which is made out of several vegetables. It comes under the category of thin unpassed soup. So we are going to add a lot of vegetables and then finally some kind of carbohydrate is added. It could be rice, it could be pasta. So today we are using fuzili pasta which we are going to add later on. We are going to flavor this soup today with chicken stock. We have also added some rice water to it. So it's going to impart a very nice flavor and it's also going to increase the nutritive value of it. So let's begin. We have Tokupu here and Kajini today with us who are going to do all the cooking today. Let's walk you through this demonstration. We heat the pan please. So the saucepan is on flame. Now we are going to add some refined oil. That's okay. So first, this is on a high flame because we want to heat the oil. Then we are going to add mirpoa of vegetables. Mirpoa is roughly chopped aromatic vegetables. So today we have onion and carrots which we are going to add. So now the oil is nicely heated up. We are going to add the onion and carrot inside. Add this as well. Remove this. Okay. So, on a low flame, we are going to sweat the onion and carrot until the oil takes all the flavor of it. So we need to ensure that nothing is sticking to the pan. We need to ensure that the onion or the carrot are not getting brown in color. Because we just have to sweat them. We just want to extract the aroma and the flavor of the onion and carrot. So this forms as the base of this soup. The cooking technique which Kakupu is right now using is known as sauteing. So he is basically sauteing all the vegetables. At the same time, he is ensuring that nothing is sticking to the base of the pan and nothing is sticking to the sides as well. So it's very important for us to keep on scraping the sides. It's very important for us to keep on scraping the bottom of the pan. And at the same time, we need to ensure that the flame is low because if it's high, it's going to caramelize the onions, it's going to caramelize the carrots, which we do not require for making this dish. Now the onion and carrot is nicely sauteed. Then we are going to add in the tomato puree, which is here. We have taken whole red tomatoes. We have blanched it. Then we have removed the skin. We have also removed the seeds. And then we have made it into a very fine paste. So this is going to give a very nice tangy flavor to the, this is going to give a very nice tangy flavor to the soup and it is also going to provide it color. So now when the tomatoes, so now when the tomatoes have been added, we are going to add some salt so that it helps in the process of cooking of tomatoes. So just a little bit at this point of time because we are going to adjust the seasoning later on. So now we can turn on the heat, turn up the heat a little bit so that the tomatoes cook and then gradually we will start adding all the vegetables one by one. It has been some time now since the tomato puree is cooking. Now we are ready to add some more vegetables. 
So we are going to put in the green peas which we have. We are also going to add the diced mushrooms which we have here. There are so many ingredients which goes inside this dish. There are very there are very different variations of it also. So there are many different variations for this dish. People can add anything what they want. In some variations baked beans goes inside. In some variations sprouts can go inside. In some variations they add, like to add some cereals, they add some rice. Today we are going to add beans, we are going to add peas, we are going to add mushrooms. We are going to add some green bell peppers and some chopped cabbage as well. Finally, we are going to add in the pasta. So it's now the time to add in all the green beans which we have here. So we are going to add the green beans. We have finally... We are going to add all the green beans. These beans have been diced and this cut which the students have prepared today is known as Masedova. So Masedova is a pea-sized cut in which all the vegetables we fabricate are supposed to be in the size of a pea. We need to constantly ensure that nothing is sticking to the pan because it's going to impart a burnt flavour which we do not require for this soup. Now it's the perfect time to add in the rest of the ingredients, which is cabbage. And we have some chopped green bell peppers. Make sure to give it a nice stir. And Make sure to scrape out all the edges, make sure to scrape out the base of the pan. Finally, we will adjust the seasoning. We are going to add in some dried herbs and then we will add the chicken stock and then we are going to simmer it. So time to add some herbs. We are going to add in some thyme here. Just a little bit, we need to make sure that we are not overdoing the herbs or it's going to take away the taste or the aroma of the vegetables which comes naturally. So we are adding in the herbs, thyme, oregano and a little bit of parsley in very small quantities. So the, all the vegetables has been sauteing in for a few minutes now. Everything has released it's water, the flavour is mingling together very nicely. We just need to adjust the seasoning. So I'm going to add some more amount of salt. And we are also going to add in some white pepper powder. It's very important to mix everything nicely. And after it's done, we have here some chicken stock which is going to flavorize this soup. So now it's the perfect time to add in the chicken stock and then we will allow the soup to simmer. So Kajini, please add the chicken stock. Everything, yes. So we are going to increase the flame at this point of time. Give me a duster. When we are cooking, it's also very important for us to maintain the hygiene of the place. And it's also very important for us to keep on cleaning our cooking ranges and cleaning our stations. So we have only one ingredient which is left to go, which is the pasta. 
we have fusilli pasta here traditionally the italian people they add several different types of pastas they can add spaghetti they can add macaroni which is the elbow shaped pasta sometimes they add linguine to it also today we are going to add fusilli in some italian homes they add rice instead of pasta so this is a very classical soup which has a lot of variations in every italian home it's made differently so now we are going to allow the soup to simmer for 10 minutes and then we are going to add in the pasta and we are going to cook the soup till the pasta cooks nicely the the soup has been simmering nicely for the last 15 to 20 minutes now we are going to add in all the pasta and we are going to cook the soup until the pasta cooks nicely after the pasta gets done the soup is ready we are just going to check the seasoning we will adjust the seasoning if required and then we are going to portion it out in soup bowls and we will add some cheese to it traditionally parmesan cheese or parmigiano reggiano cheese is added we are going to add some processed cheese here so the pasta is added here it's going to take roughly 15 to 20 more minutes to cook it nicely after which the soup is ready and then we will garnish it we will portion it out and then it's ready for service thank you so after minestrone we are going to make egg benedict it is a very classical dish very popular all across the world as a breakfast item all the top restaurants five stars you visit in any part of the world you will probably find this dish this dish has four components first is the english muffin it forms the base of eggs benedict then we put in canadian bacon canadian bacon comes from the back part of the pig today we are going to use ham instead of canadian bacon there are many variations to it so in some of the variation bacon is also used instead of canadian bacon so there's a difference between bacon and canadian bacon bacon comes from the belly part of the pig canadian bacon comes from the back part of the pig so today we will use ham so first part is english muffin second part is ham third part is going to be the poached eggs so we will keep it one top of the another then finally we are going to mask it with hollandaise sauce so right now we are going to make the hollandaise sauce hollandaise sauce is a hot emulsified sauce emulsification basically means mixing two liquids which do not mix naturally so we are going to use egg yolks egg yolks has lecithin inside lecithin is an emulsifying agent so first we are going to whisk it so we have bendang today here with me bendang is going to whisk the egg yolks he is going to whisk it until it reaches the ribbon stage or what is known as sabayam there are two types of emulsified sauces one is mayonnaise which is known as cold emulsified sauce the other is hollandaise which we are making right now it is known as hot emulsified the only difference between the two is application of heat so we have a double boiler ready here in french it is known as bain marie so on one pot there is some water which is simmering we need to make sure that the water is not boiling we need to make sure that the water is simmering and on top of that we put another bowl in which we cook delicate items if we want to make if we want to melt chocolates we use bain marie if we want to cook eggs but at the same time make sure that it's not getting overcooked we use a bain marie here we are using bain marie to whisk the eggs and we are going to whisk it until it reaches the sabayo consistency just take it off take it off from the heat and whisk it nicely so it's going to take some time to reach the stage of sabayo bandang is continuously whisking it we need to ensure that the flame is very low or else the egg will curdle we are going to whisk it until it becomes thick and it reaches the stage of ribbon
So Bendang has been beating the eggs for quite some time. It's nice, fluffy and at ribbon stage right now. At this point of time, we remove it from the flame and the time has come to incorporate the clarified butter which we have. So the formula here is, if you are using one egg yolk, you are going to use 100 ml of clarified butter. Here we used three egg yolks, so we are using 300 ml of clarified butter. But before adding this, I'll put in some white pepper powder. And I'll put in some salt as well. Give this one. And slowly, we are going to incorporate butter. So in thin stream, we are going to add in butter and then we are going to whisk it. So we need to ensure that we are whisking it. The speed should be fast. And we also need to ensure that we are constantly adding clarified butter in a thin stream. We'll wait sometimes till all the oil gets incorporated. The thing is that if you add too much of clarified butter at once, the emulsion will not take place. So we need to make sure that we are adding it in less quantities, little by little. And at the same time, we need to ensure that we are whisking it nicely. This step is very important. If this step is not done nicely, the emulsion will not form. The sauce will not look nice. It will not be of nice taste and nice texture. So little by little, we have incorporated all the clarified butter and Bendang has been constantly whisking it. The sauce is almost ready. We just need to add in one more ingredient, which is known as nutmeg powder. We are going to add just a little bit because it has a very sharp flavor, very less of nutmeg. It provides a nice aroma to the hollandaise. So the hollandaise sauce is ready. We will now keep it aside and then we will prepare the poached eggs. Our freshly baked English muffins are already ready. Next step is to make the poached eggs. After making the poached eggs, we are ready for assembling our eggs benedict. Let's move on to the next part. So it has been roughly 20 to 30 minutes since the soup has been simmering. The pasta is nicely cooked. All the vegetables are nicely cooked and the seasoning is perfect. Now it's time for plating. So we need to make sure that we are adding a good amount of vegetable and pasta inside the soup bowl. At the same time, we need to make sure that we are adding the thin soup as well. Finally, we are going to garnish it with some grated cheese. And this very appetizing and tasty minestrone soup is ready. And it's ready for the guest to consume it. So after making the hollandaise sauce, we are going to prepare poached eggs. For making poached eggs, we want simmering water. So we have water with vinegar, which is at a simmering stage right now in the saucepan. Bendang is going to break the egg. We need to be very careful with breaking the eggs. We don't want to damage the egg yolk. For making nice poached eggs, it's very important to have very fresh egg. Ideally, eggs which are one to two days old are perfect for making poached eggs. When you have broken the egg, you need to ensure that you are creating a whirlpool inside the saucepan. So you need to do it with the help of a slicer. The water will start rotating. 
and when you have a gentle whirlpool you are going to lower down the egg inside this will make sure that the egg starts to cook as soon as it goes inside the water and all the egg whites are also at the same place a nice poached egg will have a thorough cover of egg whites and the egg yolk would be hidden inside it so we need to make sure that we are not overcooking the egg yolks we need to make sure that the yolk is still slightly runny so if the whirlpool has stopped you need to just gently turn the water around it's going to take roughly 2 minutes perfect time to serve it hot so finally the last dish for the day we are making fuzili aglio e olio It is basically a pasta the shape of pasta which we are using today is known as fuzili aglio e olio means garlic and oil so this is a very simple pasta preparation very popular all across the world and especially in italy so we are going to heat some oil and then we are going to fry the garlic along so we have welpam today here welpam is going to add in some oil that's enough As soon the, as the oil heats up, well palm will add some garlic to it. So add some garlic. It's here. We are going to add in some garlic, and it's very important to make sure that we are not browning the garlic. We don't want brown garlic here. So it is a very simple preparation in which we stir fry some garlic, we add some red chili flakes, and then we add some seasoning. So it's important to allow the garlic to sweat in the oil so that oil takes the flavor of garlic. So the garlic is almost brown now we are going to add in some pasta which is required here. So we will we will add a little bit. Stir fry it nicely keep on shaking the pan. make sure you don't break it so we need to ensure that we are not breaking the pasta as we have already boiled the pasta there are many possibilities that the pasta can break while you are stir frying it so you need to be very careful with that once the pasta is tossed in the garlic oil now it's time for us to add some more seasonings so we have crushed red pepper flakes here we are going to put it there and then we are going to put in some white pepper powder some oregano a little bit of thyme and very little of parsley finally we will adjust the salt make sure not to add too much of salt because the water which is used to boil pasta also contains salt so we have added very little amount 
So we have the plate in front of us. Pasta has nicely been tossed with the spices and garlic. Now it's time to serve it. So pasta alio e olio is ready. We have used fusilli today. This pasta does not contain any sauce. It is just chopped garlic and chili flakes. So the main flavor which you are going to get here is of garlic. Very strong flavor of garlic. And then you'll have a mild note of the herbs which we have added. We have added oregano, we have added thyme, and we have added some parsley. So our menu for the day is ready. Thank you. So the hard work of our students is in front of you. Ex Benedict pasta alio olio or fusilli alio e olio is ready. We have minstrone which is ready over here. So now it's almost 1 1 30. It's time for our students to have lunch. They have done this hard work and this is going to be consumed by all of our students. So let's enjoy this. Thank you so much for today. Let's meet another day and let's hope that whatever you be. Let's hope whatever we cook the next day is also tasty. Bon appetit.